Good afternoon. It's Rescue Boss here. It's Saturday, December 1st, 2018. It's about 3 p.m. I'm going to do a quick video just to uh, review what I carry in my uh, first responder BLS bag that I carry in my car. Um, it's not a real big bag. A quick grab it, show you. Pretty small bag. Um, a lot of stuff in it. I'm just going to go over some of the stuff I carry. Not in full detail, but I'll explain some of the stuff we carry um, and why I carry it. Um, some of the stuff I carry in my bag. Um, I keep a flashlight, some heat packs, ice packs. Ammonia inhalants, some alcohol wipes, after cut stuff, uh, emergency blanket, okay, the Mylar emergency blankets, um, pocket mask, uh, only because I don't carry a uh, bag valve mask, it takes up too much space, so I carry a pocket mask, uh, handful of triage tags, in case I get a Mass casualty incident, I can pick three other people. There's about five or ten um, uh, tags there, enough that I can quick go through the people, sort them out, figure out who needs to go first, who needs to go next, uh, the most critical, stuff like that. Uh, not many, but it's enough to get me started. Most of our stuff that I'm going to run into, the most I'm going to have is maybe uh, five to to uh, 10 patients, give or take. This other zipper part, um, when I pull it out, this is a splinting bag. It's made so I can grab the bag. Everything I need for splinting is in here. Um, triangle bandages, the uh, Sam splint, finger splint, ace bandages. Uh, also keep uh, two rolls of pet wrap with me, Coban and some uh, hand soap in case you need to decon after the call. Having a way to uh, protect yourself is always going to be important. Um, splinting wise, nothing fancy. Like I said, sand splint, some cravats, finger splint, enough that I can do a quick splint until EMS arrives or get that person to another area if it would be a major event. Let me quick zip that one up so we Move on to the next area. Uh, my next area is the airway stuff. These are all nasal airways, various sizes, with the uh, jelly to uh, petroleum jelly to put on it. So if I need to put it in somebody's nose, I have the lubrication stuff, along with a bulb syringe. Um, mostly used uh, when you're dealing with babies, but I could if somebody's aspirating, depending on it. I can actually take that and put it in their mouth and suck out the fluid. Uh, I keep a pair of trauma shears in here. Okay, this big piece here is what we call a sharp shuttle. Another thing I keep in here is IV flushes to rinse out somebody's eyes. I also have uh, more uh, airways. These are oral airways. And then I carry the iodine swabs in here also. Let me just try to put some of this stuff back so I don't forget it. So if I need it, it's already ready to go for the next time. And I try to tell people to use something, replace it. This is not out of my go bag. This is a uh, medical bag I carry. This would be one of my first things I would go to. My uh, get home bag, bug out bag, I normally don't touch unless something major is going on and I'll have stuff with me. The next pouch up here, this is all bandaging, okay? Anything from 4x4s and band-aids, I keep them in a plastic bag. To your bigger uh, 4x4s, 5x9s, trauma dressings, more Coban. Uh, Roller gauze. I try to keep everything as organized as I can. Um, burn gel sheets. 
are also in here. This is the bigger one. Okay. All that type of stuff's in there. Various size bandages, various size band-aids, uh, stuff that you're normally going to use is what I keep in there. In here is um, some ground uh, cloths that I could put down, um, like a blue uh, chuck to put under somebody if they're bleeding, stuff like that. Uh, I keep also in here is an isolation kit so I can protect myself. That includes uh, two sterile procedure masks, two face masks, one contamination gown, uh, and the sleeves to protect your arms. Uh, we don't think about that type of stuff, but you never know, uh, especially if you're out on the roadways. I like to have stuff protect me. I don't worry about me as much, um, but I don't want to bring something home to my family. Um, on the back side of this, I am trained know how to use it. It's a blood pressure cuff, okay? A stethoscope. And that's about all I carry in my bag. Now, picture, uh, as I did state, I do carry um, tourniquets and everything else. That's in another bag. Um, eventually, I'm going to try to add at least one tourniquet to this bag uh, if I need it. But uh, that bag is just designed uh, for everyday emergencies that myself as an EMS provider could use. Um, even as um, a first aid bag, you could use that. Um, the only thing I would probably take out of it, if you don't know how to use them, the blood pressure cuff, a stethoscope. But now you can keep that in there, and if somebody's trained, they can use it. Um, so that's always an option. Also in that bag were the airways. Uh, if you don't know how to use them, Somebody else might, or you just take that type of stuff out um, if you don't need it. Or when you make your own kit, you don't put that in it. Um, but I'd also look at having other things maybe that you could add to it, you know, like uh, over-the-counter meds. I don't keep many type of medications in there because in the state of Pennsylvania, as an EMS provider, we normally don't are, aren't prescribing meds. Um in my everyday bags that I would have would be the meds I would use for myself, Tylenol, Advil, Pepto, um, or if my partner needed something, if we were having a long day, being stuck in the ambulance. That type of stuff is what I normally keep around, keep, you know, for myself. I'm not dispensing it to a person. Um, so that's important to realize. I wanted to do just a quick talk about my bag. That was it. Nothing real fancy. Um, picture the emergencies you can handle with it having bleeding control it's not a fix-all it's not a large bag to be able to treat um, 50 people I wanted to keep it small I have a small vehicle don't have a lot of room uh, eventually I'd like to upgrade to different setups um, maybe make a module for um, my car that would better suit it but right now, this is what I can afford. This is what I have. Um, like I said, that, that bag is a Pacific Emergency Products bag. Uh, it's a nice little bag. The military has a bag like that too. So you can use whatever you have available to make your bag. Uh, this was sort of an add-on to my first aid video, except it's more about my personal medical bag. And picture the stuff you're dealing with every day. Um, not everybody needs all the big hype stuff. Sometimes the basics is the way to go. But now that winter time's here, be careful of uh, liquids in your bag. Are they going to freeze? Um, you may have to think about that. Um, like the burn gel, you may have to watch for that, that it doesn't freeze. That has a liquid inside of it. The soap, you have to watch that it doesn't freeze. But uh, some of that other stuff you have to be careful of. So you got to watch where you keep that stuff so it doesn't freeze. Uh, for now, that's it. Um, hopefully you all have a great day. Any questions, feel free to ask. Uh,
down below the video. I'll try to uh, just uh, put a title there. Um, if you need anything, always ask. Like I said, I am far from know knowing all the information. But I have a general understanding of how to handle everyday emergencies due to working in that field. This is Rescue Boss. I'll be signing out. You all be safe and God bless.